Good morning, and welcome to the wonderful world of Des Moines. Now just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello. Hello, hello. Today's swear word of the day is heat dome. <laughs> heat dome. <laughs> <laughs> it is so hot. I was out doing rose work today, and man, it just about got me. I'll make sure to show your shirt. Oh, oh it's the Amana Smokehouse. Oh yeah, from, from our from our trip to the Amanas. Yeah. yeah, I really like that shirt. Yeah. Um, and today Craig and I went to volunteer, and he did a great job. And then we went out to eat and did some other things, which you'll see in the video. Uh, in today's video, we're supposed to be making ham and beans, which we started, but those beans are taking a long time to cook. It is now 7.37 and they still need a while to cook. Um, is it the... Is it I the, think it's a new crock pot. Well, or is it is it the navy beans? Because there's two different kinds yeah. of those. You have great northern beans and navy beans and my dad always swore by of course he was in the navy so mm -hmm. you know he had the navy beans yeah I so he swore by that. the navy beans what the, the whole thing about that was is supposedly the great northern beans they'll give you gas and it stinks supposedly the the navy beans don't stink i don't know <laughs> and, if i buy that <laughs> that's, that was another thing you know he said you'll make a lot of noise with them but they don't stink and i I'm was like, thinking there was something I just remember there's something you can put in like your beans so you don't have gas from them. I don't remember what it is. I'm gonna have to look that up again. Oh, it's supposed to... it was like a nat it wasn't any yeah. Yeah. It, it was a food additive or something. I don't remember what it Maybe was. Maybe it was baking soda. I don't know. Maybe it was bacon. <laughs> no, I don't think it was bacon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe we should go to another <laughs> subject. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, oh, and before I forget, Joe made another video today on his rose propagation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I took one of my really pretty uh, peach roses. And uh, I had on purpose been letting it get really tall so I could get a lot of good stems off of it. I think I got I got six, six good starts off of it today. But I filmed the whole process from the beginning to, well, not, not the end, but till I had them uh, domed up and everything. So it's fun to do. I mean, I think any, anybody can do it. It's starting roses is a novice thing. You, all you got to have is, is the correct tools and it doesn't cost much and you're ready to go. Okay. So too bad y'all don't live around here because I'd we'd have lots. Away. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody, I even mentioned my video. I said, so one of our, I know one of our viewers is in Oskaloosa, mm -hmm. not very far away. And I said, Hey, you want roses? We'll get you some roses. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and so I was going through some of my old journals, reading them. And I always am amazed by the things that I read that I totally don't remember. Um, I was reading this was... I'm always totally amazed when I remember something. Well, I know. And Joe will remember part of it that I no. don't remember at all. Um, this was around the time Craig was five. And we went to Adventureland and Craig had liked to ride rides before, but when he turned five, he didn't want to ride any of the rides. Uh, the only thing he would ride was the train. But I did make note that he did a really good job waiting for the train. Apparently, uh, the year before, he had a really hard time waiting for the train to get to the station and then he didn't want to get off. He kept wanting to ride the train over and over, but apparently that year was much better and I also had a funny story about how Stephanie, she would have been seven and she was finally old enough to ride the outlaw roller coaster at Adventureland. It's a, it's a smaller wooden roller coaster. It's really rickety. I never a lot liked of, that a lot one. Of sh the, the turns on it are too sharp, so, so it's a real rough ride. It really is. <laughs> And it, so she wrote it with Joe and it said that Joe, when they got off, Joe told me that she screamed the whole time, I want my mommy. I want my mom, I want my mom, I want my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, the moment we started down the first hill, I just kept saying, it's almost over, it's almost over, it's almost over. So we was like dueling banjos. I want my mom, it's almost over. I want my mom, it's almost over. <laughs> and... 
She's not afraid anymore, though. She no. likes the coasters. Yeah. Um, and funny enough, Craig does too. It makes me wonder when it changed because by the time we went to Florida for the first time, and I'm trying to, if Craig was here, he could tell me how old he was. When you were the first Well, Bennett coaster? was only, well, or, when we went to Florida, he, he rode rides. I don't know if he rode coasters, he but, coasters. but he wasn't afraid to ride any of the, yeah. uh, of the ones that he could ride. I know he had been tall enough for coasters when he first decided to ride one. And down in down in Florida, the first one he said he wanted to ride was the Incredible Hulk coaster. Oh, I remember that. And I'm like, oh, I thought, well, we're gonna get to the top and then, or the, the front of the line, and then they've got where you can just pass through and you don't have to go, uh-uh. He got right in that seat and was pulling, up, pulling down on the thing and I buckled him up. And it was, well, it's like people commented on our Florida trip, you know, that our last one it, it was nice to see craig on the on the roller coasters <laughs> like slinky because he smiles it was the exact same thing he was just wall to wall just, but he had hold he wouldn't let go i said you gotta let go and he, he didn't wouldn't even talk to me but he was smiling the whole way he just i think it's just that that rush on it on mm -hmm. him that G, the the g-forces and everything is what he likes it's the same thing that would just about kill me nowadays well <laughs> that's funny I remember when he started riding rides again, and I don't know how old he was, but his favorite, he had two favorite rides, um, the underground, which is just kind of like a tunnel boat ride in a way. And it's they a, have a few a, things that are supposed to be scary in no, there. No, it's not a boat ride though. No, it's on a, it's a train. Is it's it a, a train? It's a, it's on a small track roller coaster. It goes, and it goes real slow through most mm -hmm. of it and everything. It's, it's a, a lame dark ride is what it but is. But Craig loved that ride and the G-Force, which makes sense when you said he liked the G-Forces. Yep. And he did. It's what, like really whips you around. We rode that Adventureland this year yep. and he still loves that and ride. He loved, and he loved the Scramblers. Yeah. He, yeah. Too. And when we went, he still remembered those. And we had to ride one of those when we went to Arnold Park, which that's actually of the of the spinning rides, that's the only one I, I can ride. And it's only because it's simple geometry, folks. It doesn't spin, it cuts triangles. If you watch that thing go, it's almost all the time you're just like slowly going real straight, you turn real sharp, and then you go straight again, and just chick, 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 chick. That's, that's the only way I can ride it. But he doesn't like to ride like the Hulk anymore. And he doesn't want to ride the big, a new coaster. It's not really new. And now it's been there a couple of years. Oh, um, Velociraptor. Yeah, Velocicoaster. Yeah. yeah. I think that looks too scary. Well, I'm not big on coasters anymore either, but I think if um, that looks really scary. I think if I was still able to ride something like the Hulk, I think he would have still been riding it. Yeah, you could talk him into it. And I'm yeah. not even going to try. Yeah, he <laughs> would, I don't want to ride it. Yeah, he would. He would have went on that with me. But I had to learn to like coasters since your heart attack because yeah. you can't go on them. So Not, I've had to go yeah. on the mummy and yeah. well, I think should I, could I have do, to write? I, oh, I think I could do the mummy. Hagrid's. Yeah, I, I can do Hagrid's. It's, it's about as, Hagrid's is about as big as I can go. I can't. Hagrid's is, if, it, I couldn't ride it very many times in a day because it, it is very... It's the double launch on it that gets yeah, me. Yeah, well, and it drops and you go backwards. Oh, yeah, and mind. I mean, there's a lot of like <gasps> moments, I guess, is the only thing that I can tell or... you. I don't know. It's just a sud really sudden movement oh, that you're not... Yeah. I mean, if you rode a lot of times, maybe you would be. But you're never. for me, I'm never prepared for that. But it's a lot of fun. I love that coaster. And I love the mummy, which I never, I wouldn't write it for years until I had to write it. Um, I also, and he didn't, oh, and also at that same time, Craig stopped liking the things at the park. Like he didn't want to swing anymore and he didn't want to go on the merry-go-round. He didn't want to go down the slide. And I had an excerpt where I wrote about how Craig took um, Stephanie and Craig, Joe took Stephanie and Craig to the park on a Saturday while I was doing my farmer's market stuff back at that time. And he got Craig to go down the slide by going on his lap and he got him to ride the mirror go round and maybe the slide. But um, I said that Craig didn't enjoy it, but he did tolerate it. Um, I'm just assuming that we kept working with that and finally he enjoyed it again or he got over whatever fear it was that he had because he he must have at some time developed a fear or i get 
what I wrote was I thought maybe it was the feeling of being out of control that was scary to him at that time. Which was the part that he liked at first. Yeah. He, he wanted, if I could have, he'd have wanted me to run him all the way and spin him around and around on the mm -hmm. swing. He wanted to go as high as I could mm -hmm. I could get him. I'd get him to where, you know, you do that and all of a sudden you get that weightless system and, and the, the chain snap. And that scared me because I thought, man, he's he used to... He's right on the back of my motorcycle with me once mm -hmm. in a while. And he wanted, I'd say, hang on tight, you know, and I could feel him hanging on. And all of a sudden I'd feel him let go. And I could look in the rear view mirror and he's putting his hands up and he's, he's like, fly, yeah. yeah, and he's feeling that. And I'm, and I got to where I couldn't do that anymore either. Even with the helmet, you know, I didn't want him to, I didn't want him to fall off the back. Yeah, so too scary. He just would not hang on. He just loved that. He loved that feeling of that mm -hmm. rush. And that's what he ended up liking about all the, the roller coasters mm -hmm. and the, the rides at the parks now. I forgot what I was going to say. Um, You're radioactive? Yeah. <laughs> I also... Well, that's an old joke. I don't know who the comedian used to say that. People ask me, say, oh, I forgot what to say. I'd say, are you radioactive? <laughs> I don't remember it. It's probably off of Saturday Night Live or something. No, I think it was from the... Rodney Dangerfield used to have the Young Comedians show. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of up-and-comers got their start on TV. One of my favorites was Stephen Wright. Real super oh, deadpan. Yeah. If you haven't seen him, look up Stephen Wright on YouTube. After you get done watching this all the way through. <laughs> 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 He's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Um... Well, I was thinking maybe at that time, Craig suddenly um, realized fear because also at that time, I think I mentioned before, there was a time when Craig would have just walked right into the water. Like we we stopped going to like reunions yep. that or were at fire. the park or fire. Yeah. yeah, he did that at my dad's. My dad would burn leaves mm -hmm. and I just would have to just grab hold of him and sit in a lawn chair. Yeah, because he was mesmerized down. by the smoke. And the swirls mm -hmm. of the of the smoke and the fire yeah and that was terrifying time um but then all of a sudden he realized fear and he wouldn't do any of that anymore we didn't have to worry about that and which probably was around the same time that he stopped wanting to ride the rides and swing on the swings and so maybe that had something to do with it um the last thing that i read was something i also forgot was that craig started to refer to himself in the third person. And I think with Craig, um, that was just his way of learning. He was just learning to talk and learning to communicate, but uh, he would um, say things like, mom, Craig needs help. Or I, one time uh, I wrote that one time we were watching a cartoon and it was sad. And he said, mom, Craig's going to cry. Uh, Cause I thought that was really cute. So I recorded that. Um, and also, he would tell on himself, he would say, Mom, Craig broke the train, or Craig did this, or Craig did that. And and at that time, at least, we thought that was probably because Stephanie would tell on him and say, Mom, Craig, she would tell me, Mom, Craig broke the train. So he was just telling on himself before she could. So I thought that was interesting. That I think that's just the way he was learning to communicate at the time. And then eventually it evolved into him not doing that anymore. Um, so those are just some things that I thought were interesting. Uh, around the time Craig was five, I didn't know if, if anyone else had any um, similar experiences with that or what your experiences were. Did, were your kids afraid of rides or swinging or um, did they en always enjoy those things? And I don't have anything else to say, unless you do. Nope. <laughs> Believe it or not, Joe doesn't have anything <laughs> to add to that. Um, so with that, we'll just go on to the rest of our video. We had a good day, and we will see you all tomorrow. Bye. Peace. All right, so um, I put the beans on to soak last night, and this morning we need to drain the beans. Can you drain the beans, Craig? Right here. Yep, I got the strainer all ready. 
And we also have this uh, ham bone with lots of ham on it that I saved the last time that we had ham. And we're going to cut some of the meat off, but we will also just put the whole bone in there when we cook the ham and beans. It gives it a really nice flavor. Okay, now we pour, can, let's see, we need to pour the beans in here. Now you wanna pour that water over the beans. Um, you wanna make sure you have plenty of water because the beans are going to soak up a lot of water. Mm. That looks good, because we still need room for our ham to fit in there. Ham. All right, so now, do you wanna try and slice some of the ham off of there, Craig? I know mm -hmm. how to do it. You don't know how to do it's it? It's slimy. Okay, I'll do that okay, part. So this is what it looks like. I just, I've cut some ham off of there. Craig wanted nothing to do with that because he thought it felt slimy. Um, and then I just put the whole thing on top of the beans. And as it cooks, that ham will cook off the bone and it will give the beans an amazing flavor. Now I've made ham and beans before without the ham bone and it tastes good too. Uh, having the bone in there just gives it more flavor. I almost forgot this step, but funny enough, Craig reminded me that I usually put some chicken broth in with the beans and the ham uh, just to give the broth more flavor. Sometimes it can taste kind of watery. I like this um, concentrated liquid broth that you can keep in the refrigerator. Um, I got it on Amazon, but I like it. So I just squirt some in there. And that will definitely help the broth to have more flavor to it. It's Wednesday. No, Tuesday. That's right. It's Tuesday. And what do we do on Tuesdays, Craig? Volunteer. Yes. We are on our way to a volunteer at the Ronald McDonald House. And then what will we do after that, Craig? Eat at Ted's Coney Island. Yeah. Ted, Craig's choice is Ted's today, and I'm not going to argue because it's definitely one of my very favorite places to eat in Des Moines. So we should be on our way. Say hello to Ronald McDonald. Hello, Ronald McDonald. And Craig is ready to go. We had to miss last week because I wasn't feeling so good after our day at the fair. Craig's busy getting all the laundry started. Looks like we have plenty to do today. Another part of our job is putting the laundry away. Well, floor one or two? Uh, let's go to floor two. Good idea. Floor. Take it to the closet. Now we have to fit it in here, right, Craig? Yep. We have tearful stink. We have tearful. Craig was playing that music in the elevator and he said it was elevator music <laughs> on this very hot day I don't know what the temperature is now but it's hot and the air is thick um, we're eating at Ted's Coney Island and it smells like onion rings already mm, let's see I'll have a bacon cheeseburger, pour the lettuce, pour the tomato, and pour the onion. We'll have it in a basket. Yeah. With ketchup, mustard, and pickles, please. And a side of onion rings, too. No, no he doesn't need those. Just the basket. Our food has arrived. Here's Craig's bacon cheeseburger, his usual. It comes in the basket. And here's my beef burger on a hot dog bun, which is my favorite thing to get here. They probably have many other delicious things, but I always want this, so that's what I get. Let's get a picture of the first bite. I think this might be at least one of Craig's favorite bacon cheeseburgers. I think it is, actually. I'd say Applebee's, but actually he never gets a cheeseburger there. He always gets the club sandwich. Ted's Coin Island's the best restaurant. 
The burger tastes delicious. The waitress seems nice. I give it two thumbs up, five stars, and a Craig A. Vanver Silver Purple. Stopped into McDonald's for some ice cream. Craig got a vanilla cone. And I decided to try the Peanut Butter Crunch McFlurry. I've seen this advertised and I am a sucker for peanut butter. No, you have to spoon it. You have to use a spoon. I'll have Craig try the Peanut Butter Crunch McFlurry. See what he thinks. Mmm. Peanut buttery. You think so? Mm -hmm. I don't taste a lot of peanut butter. I mean, I do taste some. For me, it's kind of uh, disappointing. It's not creamy because of those chunks are dry. But, I mean, it's not terrible. Just not what I was expecting. Stop is Hy-Vee to pick up some prescriptions. And I see over there, it looks like they just got their mums in. They're still in the plastic. <laughs> All right, maybe we'll see if they have any good specials on produce. Looks like they have something for $1.66 here. Is it the moon grapes? Oh, no, it's these cherries are $1.66 a pound. That's pretty, it's a pretty incredible price, actually. So, I probably have to get some of these. Find you, you scared me. You looking for something? No. Yeah, some pretty flowers. Some cookie sandwiches. Oh, here's what I always like to look in. Oh, there's another Friday's product, but I probably won't get that. Craig knows right where to go. <laughs> they may have had these last year, but I don't remember the ghoulish green twist. I think I do remember the Snickers with the green, though. And while in hy -Vee, I did see they have some cute fall items. I like this little pumpkin. It's $10. It's kind of pricey. Some little little pumpkins up here, which are six dollars. Like this, tis a season to be folly. <laughs> That's about all they have right now. I like that lantern. All right, our next stop is Aldi. Let's see what they have today. I think we'll do an Aldi haul. We really came here. Oh, I forgot to get a cart, Craig. That in there. Does everyone keep a quarter in their car for when they come to Aldi? <laughs> I have a special spot. I always make sure there's a quarter in there. Um, kind of looking for some produce while we're here. Some grapes for a dollar twenty-nine. See what else we have. I really like to get berries. Raspberries are two ninety-nine, which is cheaper than the other grocery stores. So I think we'll get a couple of raspberries. Okay. Blueberries are $2.49, which is also a great price. We'll get some blueberries. Our little Josie loves blueberries. We already got bananas. We do have some strawberries. Oh, and they have blackberries for $1.29. I always feel like blackberries are hit and miss if they're good or not. Uh, for $1.29, we'll probably try them. Uh, let's look for some apples, Craig. 
The envy apples are always really good. Those are one of my favorite apples to eat. Um, honey of course, crisp. a lot of people like the honey crisp. Is that the kind you want? Yeah, the honey crisp. Okay, let's get some honey crisp then. You want to pick one out? Yeah. And we'll have to get a bag. Does that one look good? Yep. Any okay. interesting cheese today? We've had this one before. It's hazel alike pizza. I don't think I've had the garden one, but I bet that's good. Thanks. They have the Habardi and dill and jalapeno, bread cheese. I've had this before. I don't remember if I like it, honestly. They have a lot of things you could buy for charcuterie. Spreadable cheese. Double smoked cheddar cheese. Cheddar Breyer. I've had this before, it's good. Grass fed cheddar. We need cheese, right? Tempted. I love Breyer. It has so much flavor. This is five nineteen. This is um, Lustenburger. It's supposed to be fruity and tangy for eight months. Hmm. Which one should we try? I kind of want to try this one because it says it's sweet and tangy, and I want to see if that's true. So we're going to try this one. We have a hot ham trio. So, oh, it's is it to make a hot ham and cheese? Well, that's a great idea. They have some Wahlburgers beef hot dogs for $4.99. Barbecue seasoned chicken sausage, $4.99. Craig and I are looking for their Sloppy Joe mix. I'm not finding it so far, but it's my very favorite thing to make meatloaf with. And we've been talking about making meatloaf. I don't know where it would be. Let's see, this is kind of their specialty aisle. Pumpkin maple bisque? No. Pumpkin butternut squash pasta sauce? Neither of those sound good to me. Peach cobbler and waffle cone dark chocolate. And they have a bag of these milk bear bites and they are $2.99. They have this flavors of fall, uh, Keurig or K-Cups, coffee. Sounds interesting and this is $6.99. Japanese barbecue sauce. I wonder if this is like the Korean barbecue sauce which I've made Korean barbecue tacos are really good. And that is $7.98. A pretzel pie crust. This would be good with that um, jello pie that we made. It's $3.12. They have the Super Mario Oreos here. And some cute Pez. Pickle pouches. Mm -hmm. it's Sunday. Smell good, Craig? Yep. What does it smell like? Bourbon and wild mint. Whoa, let's smell that. That's a strange... It does smell good. I like the mintiness. I never thought of a mint candle, but it's kind of pleasant. Where is $9.99? And I definitely need a square baking dish because I broke mine. Uh, I kind of like this. Do I want blue or yellow? I'll let Craig decide. Hey Craig, come here. Which color, hey Craig, you're going by, by me. Which color should I get, the blue or the yellow? Blue. Okay, we'll get blue then. I like these, I only have a nice oval one. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what that is, Craig? This is Powers and Shapes. Three plush toys in one book. There was Riley Raccoon, Milo Monkey, and Simon Snake. It's a raccoon, a monkey, and a snake. Well, it's a cute gift set, isn't it? All kind of decorating items. Let's see. 
They have some General Tso's crispy shrimp and some sweet and sour shrimp. And some little uh, spring rolls. This looks like an interesting shrimp trio. Some cotton candy grapes. Pizza looks kind of yummy. And they have some flatbreads and some garlic cheese flatbread. I just don't want to buy any frozen food today because I don't have my cooler and we have another stop to make. And they have some cute little Mickey Mouse shoes for children. Those are $8.99. Um, they have these women's slip-on shoes. Those are $7.99. So we didn't find a lot because they're out of so many things. Um, and they haven't really put out any new like housewares or decorative items since the last time we were here. Not much. So it's time to use the self-checkout. And Craig, he's making himself at home over there. Stop is Walmart because I ordered some jelly, among other things, to be delivered. And I want a blueberry and instead i got raspberry and i already have raspberry jelly so we're going to return it so the reason i had to return the jelly is this happens a lot with walmart online orders um at the last minute they'll send you a thing saying your item isn't available and then they give you what they'll replace it with and usually i say no because it's not anything i want um, but today, my order was to be delivered at 8, and I got the text at 6 a.m., so I wasn't too wide awake, and instead of pressing um, confirm, I wanted to press no, I didn't want it, but I pressed confirm, so I ended up getting this jelly, and so now I had to bring it back to the store, which is kind of annoying, but overall, uh, Walmart delivery has been really good. Um, I don't have very many complaints. So, now we need to go find the blueberry jelly. Here we are. The pumpkin spice Oreos. I knew it was coming. Do you have a selection of uh, Mexican snacks here? I don't really know what any of them are. <laughs> These look interesting. Hot cherries. They're three dollars and forty-eight cents. These spicy queso funyuns that um, Craig wants to try for a taste test. Uh, one of Craig's favorite chips are funyuns, so we'll see if he likes these. I'm in the children's area. Isn't that adorable? I love that. Okay, I'll be right there. Craig took off to look at the DVDs, <laughs> and so. We've got to hurry up and find him. I finally made it to him. Craig can go very fast. DVDs were quite a ways from where I was at. Let me see. Complete first volume. Is it the television show? Yeah. <laughs> Who are the actors in the Adams Family? I don't family? know what they are. Oh, there's John Aston. Who's your favorite character? Lurk. Lurk. <laughs> yeah, I like him too. Oh. And they do have some Disney 100 year figurine collections. And these are really cute. I like that Pete's dragon. What do you mm. think, Craig? And they are $19. So. Here's my Aldi's haul. Mostly fruit today is what we got. Um, I also got this casserole dish and Craig decided I should get the blue. We have some apples, blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, grapes, and this cheese that I wanted to try. And the total for everything was $36.93 with tax. This pan was $9.99, so that's $10 of it. Fruit's not cheap though. And Joe trimmed our roses today. And um, these are some of the ones that he trimmed off. Um, it's three o'clock. Craig and I just got home a little bit ago. 
I did, I, the beans aren't anywhere near done. Um, I did turn the crock pot up on high, which I usually do for the la at least the last couple of hours of cooking. And that gets the beans soft quicker, and then I can mash them and thicken up the sauce, because Craig doesn't like it to be too soupy. And I also will need to like trim the meat off of the bone and get that out of there. Our ham and beans will be delayed until tomorrow because I got a new crock pot since the last time I made ham and beans and apparently this one does not cook as fast. It is now seven o'clock and they still need to cook a while longer, probably at least another hour or so. Something I need to think about the next time, I guess, is starting them out on high instead of low. But, so we'll be having the ham and beans tomorrow night for dinner. One last thing for today, I think we'll try this cheese that I bought at Aldi today and see if it does indeed taste fruity and tangy. It's called Lustenburger, which I had to look that up. It's actually a traditional Swiss Gruyere and it's 100% vegetarian. That's what it said on Google. I already showed the package. Oh, you already showed it? Yeah. Right. I got this at Aldi's Must today, which stink. we'll see in the video. I picked this one because it said it has a fruity, tangy taste, and I wanted to see if that was true. Fruity? Yeah. Tangy? Let's taste it and see. That's pretty tangy. It sounds hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't like it? <laughs> mm -hmm. I actually like it a lot. Yeah, I don't like it either. Yeah. And you don't like it? No. I like it. It's got a strong flavor. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> yeah. But it's poison. <laughs> poison! It's a little dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> These both the same thing. Mm -hmm. I actually like it, but I like strong cheeses, so. Oh, I could eat it. I mean, I like I, I'd have to. This is one I'd want on a cracker. Yeah, well, it might be good also if you paired it with the I blueberry. Got now, Mama. Okay. <laughs> It'd also be good, I think, if you paired it with like the blueberry jelly on a cracker. The sweetness would offset some of that uh, yeah, tangy, like... sharp flavor. I don't know. I don't... You don't like that, though. I, I like. I don't do cheese and. I'm jelly. very like I like sweet and salty together. I'm gonna have. If I'm gonna pair something with cheese, it's gonna be Bourbon. it's gonna be some kind of salami <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Um, or bourbon, yeah. <laughs> but I liked, as you can see, Craig did not like it. Craig doesn't really like strong cheeses, though. So I guess it's not surprising, but it was surprising to me. So Craig loves his cheese. So what we've learned here tonight is, if you want to poison somebody, <laughs> feed them this. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, <laughs> we'll say good night. <laughs> okay, Craig, one of our viewers would like to know... What is your thanks? What are your favorite Thanksgiving foods? Turkey, mashed potatoes with gravy, sweet potatoes, stuffing, green, green bean casserole, scalp corn, cream cranberry sauce, and pumpkin pie. That's always our Thanksgiving menu, isn't it? Yep. You call it our Thanksgiving feast. Yep. What's your favorite leftover? Green bean casserole. Yeah, that's a, that's a casserole that has vegetables in it. Yep. I think mine might be the stuffing. I was reading through some of those old letters I used to write a friend, and it said that when you were five, you tried lasagna. Yeah, I did. <laughs> How come you won't eat it now? Because it's pasta in it. Yeah, you just don't like pasta. Yeah. I think when you were five, you tried it because Garfield liked lasagna. Yep. We've had 24 days. There's a picture of Pooh and Piglet. Okay, so can you tell us one fact about Universal Studios? You see, it's been open in 1990. Well, it opened the year Stephanie was born, didn't it? Yep. And how many times have we been to Universal Studios? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 times. Wow. We've rode a lot of rides, haven't we? Yep. Are we going to do the safe rides? What do you mean by the safe rides? When you're getting older. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting older, so I have to be careful about what I ride, right? Right. And you don't want to ride the Velocicoaster, do you? Yeah. Yeah. I don't either. 
do, 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 do. Elmer by David McKeith. Narrated by Barry Ingham. There was once a herd of elephants. Elephants young, elephants old, elephants tall and short, fat and thin, all were different. But all were happy and almost all were the same color. All except Elmer. Elmer was not elephant color. He was patchwork. Elmer was yellow and orange and red and pink and purple and blue and green and black and white. It was Elmer who kept all the, he kept the other elephants happy. Their games and jokes were always his idea. If an elephant was laughing, this, the cause was usually Elmer. But Elmer himself wasn't happy. Who ever heard of a patchwork elephant, he thought. No wonder they laugh at me. One morning, just as the others were waking up, Elmer slipped away. As he walked through the jungle, Elmer met other animals. Good morning, Elmer, they said. After a long walk, Elmer found what he was, was looking for. A large bush covered with elephant-colored berries. Elmer caught hold of the bush and shook it until the berries fell on the ground. Then Elmer lay down and rolled over on the berries. This way and that, he picked up bunches of berries and rubbed himself all over until he was covered with berry juice. When he had finished, there wasn't a sign of any yellow or orange or red or pink or purple or blue or green or black or white. Elmer looked like, like any other elephant. On his way back through the jungle, Elmer passed the other animals. Good morning, elephant, they said. When Elmer rejoined the herd, none of the other elephants noticed him. As he stood there, Elmer felt that something was wrong, that something was wrong. But what? He looked around. Same old jungle, same old blue sky, same old rain cloud, same old elephants. The other elephants were standing absolutely still, silent and serious. Elmer had never seen them so serious before. It made him want to laugh, found he could bear it no longer. He lifted his trunk and the top of his voice shouted, Boo! The other elephants jumped in surprise. Elmer was helpless with, with laughter. Then the other elephants others began to laugh. Too bad, ha 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 ha, too bad isn't here. Elmer isn't here to share the fun, they said, laughing harder and harder. And then the rain cloud burst. When the rain fell on Elmer, his patchwork started to show again. <gasps> oh, Elmer, gasped an old elephant as Elmer was washed back to normal. You played some good jokes, Wait, but this has been the biggest laugh of all. What would we do without you? We must celebrate this year every year, said another. The day of Elmer's pet's best joke. All of us elephants will decorate ourselves within his honor, said a third. And Elmer will decorate himself elephant color. And one day each year, the elephant colored themselves yellow or orange or red or pink or purple or blue or green or black or white and have a parade. If you happen to see an elephant in the Elmer's Day Parade who is an ordinary elephant color, you will know it must be Elmer. The end. And this is Craig A. Vavre saying, keep on having a great day and we'll see you real soon.